it's a pleasure to uh, present this uh, presentation to you about synchronizing uh, your um, PC. Um, I prepared this uh, in response to a request I had uh, about uh, using various ways of synchronizing uh, your PCs, your tablets, uh, various other devices that we all have. So there are numerous ways to sync uh, our desktops, laptops, telephones, and phones. And it's particularly becoming more uh, of a need now that we have uh, our data uh, that we want to be able to uh, use our data across platforms and operating systems. So as it was mentioned in the introduction that it can be relatively simple to the complex. And I'm choosing simple, but there's over a network, we can use a network attached storage, we can set up local files um, using software. Um, but that can be tricky for the uninitiated. So the simplest solution, in my opinion, that avoids a LAN altogether is a sync over the internet. And that's using the uh, various um, cloud services that we have available today. Apple's iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive. Uh, they will keep our folders in sync even if we are located in different places. And uh, we can use these services over multiple devices and platforms, Windows, iOS, and Android. The, uh, the simplest way is to be able to um, uh, is to have your cloud storage as being your central uh, storage location. And so it will then allow um, all your devices to access and share the same data and make it accessible anywhere on any device. And it's the easiest way, in my opinion, to be able to access uh, and share your data. The only thing that, that we have to, um, an issue rather, is having an internet connection. But there are offline solutions that will help with that problem. And we'll talk about those as well. So setting up uh, cloud storage is really relatively easy. And, um, then we talk about um, a, a just another actual uh, storage device. It's not physically uh, on your um, computer, but it is located in, and with servers that are located in um, various places all over the world. And so that's where we will be putting our photos, our videos, and our music, and other document types. So we can um, easily access uh, your information by signing into your, your phone, tablet, or computer. So the key uh, to accessing a cloud server is to use a common user ID and password on all devices. And so we want to make sure we have a strong password. And then we want to download the applications, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, iCloud, or other. Now, most of the new operating systems uh, will already have uh, some of these storage already built in. OneDrive comes with Windows 10. And iCloud comes with um, your Apple devices, where Dropbox uh, and Google, um, well, Dropbox, I'm sorry, uh, will be something that you have to buy um, or access separately. But the other um, operating systems already have these built in, OneDrive, Google Drive, and iCloud. Um, it's fairly simple. You want to create an account. In a lot of cases, when you uh, create um, your in initial install, uh, whatever user ID and password that you use 
that will be the one that will access um, your cloud storage. But you go about setting up your folders uh, just as you would on a on a uh, on a drive that's installed in your computer for your documents, your photos, and videos and music, and you save those data to those appropriate folders in the same manner as you would save data on a physical drive. Um, as I said earlier, internet access is required to access your data, but um, you can save your data offline where it will be available should you not have an uh, internet uh, connection. Or alternative, you can use a uh, private Wi-Fi hotspot. Now when I say a private Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, on your data plans for your smartphones, you usually are given a means of turning on a hotspot using your cellular data. This, of course, cuts into eats into your data plan. The only thing you're not going to be using this on a permanent basis is just a temporary solution to access your data. So when you're accessing um, your files offline, uh, you um, you want to be able to um, make sure that you have a means or understand how to go about uh, downloading that uh, that information beforehand. If you think you're going to be going into an area that is um, that is um, going to be um, out of, where access is not going to be unavailable, then uh, you'll want to download those in advance. So oh, here are some alternate solutions if we don't have um, that you could also use to synchronize your PC. Um, when you're synchronizing your accounts, such as your mail, contacts, calendar, you can um, use your Google and Microsoft uh, services to do this. And one thing about it is that it's creating a Microsoft account. If you use an email address or password to sign in to a Microsoft service, uh, such as Hotmail, Outlook, Messenger, or Xbox Live, you already have a Microsoft account. And you can use that to sign into any Microsoft service. And if you don't have one, you can easily create one by um, going to https um, signup.live.com and following those instructions. And there you can use any email address you already use regularly, or you can create at Outlook.com. I think a lot of people have gotten confused about this, but your Microsoft account is just an email address and a password. It doesn't have to be um, a Microsoft um, um, live account or any of those. It could be any email address that you um, want to use. Like, for example, my um, Microsoft account is wijames at sbcglobal.net and the password that I have assigned to that. Uh, likewise, uh, the Google account is the same uh, type of situation. Is that like your Microsoft account, if you have an email address and passwords uh, that you sign into your Gmail, then you already have a Google account. And you can use it to sign into any Google service. If you don't have an account, you need to create one by setting up a Gmail account, and uh, it will give you more options when you use your Google Maps, access to Google Drive, or other Google services. So what that entails is that whatever device that you use, you can use Google Drive, and you can get into your documents that you have stored. You can also uh, use um, Google Drive and Google Docs across uh, uh, platforms. 
So there's not a real problem as far as being able to access the data, your photos, your calendar, or anything, whether you're using your desktop computer, your Android device, or your iPhone, iPad, all those will be accessible uh, through uh, Google Drive. Uh, the other uh, way, which is more complex, is using your file uh, and printing sharing options that you have on a computer that's running Windows. And you can share files and folders with other computers that are on your network. Now, that means that it's internal. It won't be accessible to um, users that are outside. Or in other words, you won't be able to uh, be able to get to those uh, unless you're using a, um, if you're not within that particular network. Say, for instance, if you're outside the home and you want to access a file, then you can't use file or print sharing in that manner. But sharing um, passwords and files uh, with Windows 10 are, uh, is secured by logon details of the computer they're stored on. And anyone who wants to open a shared file or folder will need to know that password of that sharing computer. So it is possible that anyone access files you share by editing the permissions. And to do so, um, it's just a matter of going in and right clicking on that particular file or folder and then going in and editing the permissions. But if you're the only person who uses your network and you just want to be able to access your files and folders on different devices, you can change the settings to turn on password protected sharing. That means that anyone connected to your network can open any file or folder you've shared. And this, of course, is the only person using that network. And uh, as I said before, you can go to the control panel or settings in this case, network and sharing center, change the advanced sharing settings, uh, click on all networks, uh, password protected sharing, click the option that says turn off password protected sharing and then save your changes. Uh, printer sharing allows you to make an attached printer available to other computer users on the network. And if you are connected to a public network or location, uh, such as a cafe and library, you may want to turn off file and printer sharing until you're connected to a private network location. Um, and if you want to just uh, share just a file or folder, um, here are some other um, ways you can um, do that as well. Um, find the file or folder that you want to share and just press the Windows key and E and it'll bring up File Explorer and then by default you'll notice that everybody will have read only and they will be able to read and copy information but they won't be able to edit or delete it. But you can change that again by clicking on permissions and editing type of access of the file you wish to share. Now in version 1803, which is the spring uh, Windows update that just came out this past week, uh, you'll find that home group has been removed from Windows 10. Um, but you can still share a printer and files by using the features that are built into Windows 10. So after you update your PC to Windows 10, you'll find that the home group will no longer appear in File Explorer. Uh, it won't be in the control panel, which means you can't create, join, or leave a home group. And you won't be able to share new files or folders. Um, file or folder and files that were previously shared will be continued to be shared. And you can open them in File Explorer by just typing in uh, backslash backslash home PC backslash uh, shared folder name. And you can still get to any shared printer through the printer dialog box. So that's a change that came about um, with um, 
one of the changes that came about with the uh, new, new update with Windows uh, 10 version 1803. We all have a need, of course, of syncing email across devices. And of course, the simplest way of doing that is using a, a webmail such as Gmail or Hotmail. Uh, there's really no syncing needed to keep those your email coordinated across multiple computers. You just open up your web browser and everything is just as you left it. Um, and uh, the easiest way to set up uh, email on multiple devices is to use IMAP if your email account can use that. And this is the easy way to have your mail synced. And I, even if you sent mail, um, with the email server. Um, those that uh, prefer or require to use a desktop program like uh, Microsoft Outlook or Thunderbird, um, you have a little bit of a, a more difficult task of keeping your emails and contacts um, synchronized across uh, multiple devices. But here's a tip. Uh, move your Outlook PST files or Thunderbird profile to Dropbox so that all your settings are automatically synced between your computers. Another reason to go to the Dropbox route is to sync your settings and other items such as tasks in your Outlook or Thunderbird programs across your computers. Uh, there's a few caveats to this approach. You need to close out your Outlook program on the first computer before opening the PS2 second one. And this is very important because Dropbox is pretty good about creating duplications and conflicted copies of your files. But constant syncing attempts of the open PS can lead to corruption. So uh, close out your Outlook and let Dropbox do its syncing before you open Outlook on your next computer. And uh, keep in mind that if your Outlook file is very big, you can run out of space on your Dropbox account. So you may want to upgrade your account or carefully monitor your email um, boxes. And if you're using the cross-platform Thunderbird email client, you can move your profile to an external drive, like a USB thumb drive, but that requires, you know, carrying around that USB stick and bringing it to each computer that you need access. The better solution is to move your profile to a new shared location, either a shared network folder or your Dropbox folder. Now, I found a website, Lifehacker, that has the details for um, how to go on that. And this is the URL that will be uh, in the presentation when it gets uploaded to um, the uh, YouTube server and you can copy it from there. Um, seeking photos across devices. I get questions about this all the time, how they can uh, find their photos that they've taken on their phone, on your PC and vice versa. But most everybody these days are using a smartphone to take photos. And the issue is getting the photos from your phone to your other uh, devices. So um, syncing your devices with Dropbox and Google Photos will solve that problem. And it's just simply by going in the settings in Dropbox, Dropbox or Google Photos and turning on the camera uploads. And then it will then, um, as you take the picture, uh, it, at some point it will upload those. The best way I have mine set is only on Wi-Fi because you don't want to use your cellular data to be uh, um, expended trying to get uh, photos loaded up to your other devices. So when you get into a Wi-Fi situation, then that process will occur and that will save you some uh, uh, data. Because remember that photos uses a lot of data when they're being uploaded. Um, and the same thing about music is that syncing your favorite music to devices that you want to play uh, 
anywhere has never been easier. And what I suggest is using either the free or paid online services such as Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Apple Music. You can create uh, your playlist uh, on one device and it instantly becomes available across whatever devices you're using. Uh, these services also allow you to import or download your favorite music to and from your PC to any device. And Spotify is very unique in that it will allow you to play music on any device that has, uh, <coughs> pardon me, they're um, calling Spotify Connect. And you'll notice that if you're in Spotify, you go down to the bottom where it says devices available. You just uh, click on that and then you'll see all the devices that are on your network or on the internet and you can just select the one that you want and it'll play to that device. Um, in Windows 10, uh, Cortana has something else that, uh, another feature that they've uh, come up with and they were calling um, Continuum. And so if you're running a Windows 10 version 17.9 later, Cortana comes with what they call pick up where I left off. And when that's enabled, it'll allow you, uh, allow some of the apps you're running uh, during previous sessions to be restored automatically. Uh, this feature works best with Microsoft products. And you'll also find the um, uh, continuation pages showing up in the Action Center. Uh, such as what I have here, you can notice the left side center and you can see where it's saying uh, resume from your other devices and in this case uh, there was a um, that I was looking at and it's showing here um, there was another um, uh, website uh, there's some uh, PowerPoint presentation all these things were being uh, looked at or viewed on a different device and now I can click on those and resume them on my PC. So um, the requirements are is you need to sign in uh, to your uh, Cortana with the Microsoft account is again critical here on this PC and any other device you want to be able to pick up where you left off. Uh, you turn on your notifications and uh, that will allow them to be shown in the Action Center and you turn on send uh, notifications and information between devices. Um, and of course, this is only available in the uh, English version of, uh, of, of Windows. That's a means of being able to, uh, to share and sync information between uh, your PC and the device that you're using. Um, calendars are always an important um, to sync and if you use a Google Calendar you can um, get uh, your events and dates synced um, to also um, show within Windows. So with uh, Windows 10 they revamped their calendar app and so they now allow you to use both the Google Calendar and the Windows 10. And if you go into uh, calendars, you'll notice you have a choice of calendars that you can choose from. And if you use the Google one, that means that it will uh, sync with uh, your Android devices. So whatever you put in your Google Calendar will appear across any device that you're using a Google Calendar with. Um, so the process of that is that um, in Windows, may just go in and add your Google account and uh, choose the Google option and you follow the prompts and it will then customize your calendar to your liking. And uh, if you want to uh, set how often your account accumulates with the servers for new appointments, you can also have that option. Um, but keep in mind, once you add your Google Calendar, 
Google account to the calendar, Windows will automatically sync your attached mail. Um, but that can be turned off, but uh, just be aware of that, that if you all of a sudden start getting duplications of your mail, is that uh, it's bringing in um, your uh, Google Mail as well, your Gmail. Um, syncing uh, iPads and iPhones uh, has always been somewhat of a problem. <clears throat> Apple has always been very unique in how they do things, but we all know how uh, versatile and iPhones can be, and um, so um, if you configure them right and have and add the right applications, you can um, allow them to um, to sync as well. So the easiest method is to use the free mobile apps such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint which are available from Microsoft, or Google Docs in the App Store. Um, again, a single user ID and password will allow you to access your data from anywhere on any device. Um, remote desktops is another way of uh, being able to access your data. But re the remote desktop that's included in Windows 10 is not a syncing application. It's really a simple app that allows you to use your Windows PC or your Windows Android or iOS that's connected to another PC. And uh, there are some settings that you can uh, use. Is, uh, Of all days, they uh, decide to come uh, cut the grass. Sorry about that. Um, so um, the remote uh, desktop connection is, first you want to set up your remote PC to allow remote connections. And so you want to go to settings and select system. Uh, and you remember what the PC name, name is. is, because you'll need that later. And then on the re related settings, select system info. And in the left pane of the system window, select advanced system settings. And then on the remote tab, you want to allow remote connections to this computer. And then again, go to your settings icon, uh, select system, uh, and then go to power and sleep and check to make sure that sleep is never, is not set to never. That's a machine to sleep, then you won't be able to connect to it. Um, and then to uh, follow on with that, on your local Windows 10 PC in the search box, you want to type remote desktop connection, and that application will come up. And then you type in the full name of the PC. Remember we said remember the PC that you want to connect to, and then select connect. And then on your Windows, Android, iOS device, you can also um, download that application, and it's a free. Uh, it's available in the store, Google Play, or the uh, uh, Mac App Store, and add your remote PC. And then uh, just wait for the uh, connection to complete. And so then you'll be able to access the, um, your desktop computer from anywhere you, over the internet. So in summary, um, we've uh, determined that setting up a local aero network can be appreciated. Um, in my opinion, the simple solution is one that avoids the land altogether and sinks over the internet. Remember that uh, synchronization re uh, relies on an active internet connection. Look for an offline solution. In other words, download your files to uh, the storage on your device if you want to be able to use those in an area that doesn't have uh, internet access. 
but you also can find a hotspot and use that as your internet. Um, if you have another device that has cellular connection, you can uh, use that as your hotspot, and that gives you a, a, a lot more privacy and possibly more security. Um, services like Dropbox, Apple iCloud, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive keep folders and even the PCs are on different continents. Uh, you can sync your photos using online services such as Dropbox, iCloud, or Google Photo. And you can sync your music using free or paid services such as Spotify and Pandora. So, um, some other uh, alternatives are share your individual files and folders with file sharing. Um, iTunes syncs files and folders to your PC. Uh, Third-party software available in the Play Store to sim simply copy files. You can sync your email using webmail, Gmail, Hotmail, uh, but using the IMAP uh, simply uh, simplifies syncing email to multiple devices. Um, syncing your Google Calendar with Windows Mail, and of course, uh, you can also use the Windows Remote Desktop built in Windows 10 to connect with any device. So that uh, concludes I apologize noise now that they, uh, we've ended, the uh, yard people have left. But I hope that uh, didn't destroy too much of the, uh, but uh, are there any questions? I'll let people know first that they can go ahead and put questions in the chat box and we'll get to them. Uh, I've got one. Uh, can you go back on your slides to the one where you had the uh, tiny URL for uh, syncing, the instructions for syncing your Thunderbird profile? Sure. Bingo. Um, now, are you having to actually move the uh, profile from its normal storage spot to put it into either uh, Dropbox or uh, your Google Drive or your OneDrive? That's a true statement, yes. Okay, so it has to be moved there and then it can sync and, and keep everything up to date. That's correct. Now, to deal with Dropbox, remember, you make sure that before you access the, um, the second computer, it, um, to go ahead and get everything synced and then access the other computer. If not, you create a duplication. Okay. That's good. Because as, as we know, uh, there's no, no second choice to back up. You know, you've got to back up your files. You never know when something's going to gonna go south on you. That's true. Yeah. Um, and always keep a backup of your PSF file if for um, um, Outlook because I hear that those get corrupted fairly easily and uh, and so you have to recreate that. If you have a backup, then uh, it's just a matter of just replacing it. Okay. If there are any other questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we can address them now. Uh, and, you know, if you think of something after Bill goes off, we keep the chat box open until the next presentation so we can uh, get them back. Go ahead and, Bill, back to your last slide. So we've got... What, your... I need to go back? No, no. Uh, go to your final slide so people have access to your contacts. Yeah. I would really like to thank Bill. I I glad it was it was Bill who's been on these uh, VTCs many times. So his internet cutting out didn't just you know totally panic everybody. But uh, that does happen. You know you're at the mercy of what's out there at that end. Um, oh, here's a question: How do you handle virus protection on shared files? Oh, that's a good question. Um... It would be dependent on the device that you're using. Uh, 
most people do not use antiviruses on their tablets or um, or phones, uh, although there are um, products out there. So it would be dependent on the device that the antivirus would be uh, on the device that you're using. So if you're concerned about to uh, load the antivirus on that particular device. Um, so, um, in my opinion, what's, what's happening is that if you have antivirus on your PC, then it's protecting those files that you have, even though you transfer them to another device, they should be virus free between that, between that transaction. So I don't really th think that you necessarily would have to have antivirus on your tablet or your phone. It's just to ensure that you have the antivirus on the on your source uh, uh, storage area, if that makes sense. Yeah, there's always a chance if you don't have it on your phone and somebody sends you a file and then you put that file up in storage that hadn't been scanned. But it will, but your, but your, um, but when it goes to the, when you upload it, the, the uh, receiving ice that has the antivirus on it will catch it. That's good. That's good.